Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Excitement, suspense, romance, what will we find on tonight's episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies? Welcome, everybody, to episode 55 oh, of the Sandersonian you were going Institute the entire of Cosmere way Studies. With that. I, I was hoping impressed. to, and then I just sort of, I, I just sort <laughs> You're of choked. You only I, I was, committed to the bit. I'm sorry. Next time. Today is April 20th, 2020. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my loquacious co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Yes. Ballyhoo. So loquacious. Ballyhoo? Yes. What is that? What did you say, Amy? S- Tally ho? No. What about loquacious? So loquacious. Oh, quite. So loquacious. The loquaciousest. <laughs> Uh, before we get started, we do want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means if there is something in the Cosmere you haven't read and are worried about having it spoiled, you might want to go read those things first, then come back and join the discussion. Tonight, specifically, we are talking about Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Eltania. Ta-da! So is this is one of the short stories in Arcanum Unbounded that we kind of glossed over as we were doing our original reread. Um, it takes place in Era 2, and it's it originated in the broadsheets of the Era 2 books and then kind of grew from there. There's some fun backstory behind that we'll talk about in just a bit. Now, for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube instead of watching live with us, we want to remind you that you actually can watch us live, interact in the chat, discuss the podcast, discuss the books, discuss... Canadians. Life. It's great. Could d- discuss Canadians. <laughs> sure. Why not? I mean, there's all sorts of, sorts of things. Anyway, if you want to take part in that, head over to www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We do record episodes of the podcast every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us. Take an active part of the discussion. Just have fun. It's great. And we love seeing mm-hmm. you here. Now, the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free. But if you want to help us out, please head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two per episode really helps us out as we work to improve the show and just keep these episodes coming. Our patrons will get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. It's a great community. There's a lot of great discussions and you will even get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content and other good stuff. The bonusist. The, the yes. bonusiest. The most bonician. Bonusian. The bodacious. So let's just uh, sort of dive in on yes. this thing because uh, <laughs> I don't think we're helping ourselves. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Everything's going great right now. I promise we really are literate. <laughs> okay, so first I want to start with a little bit of background on this story because there were some really interesting things. First off, this story is very different from just about anything else that Brandon's mm. written. If by that um, you mean, like, amazing. It is amazing, <laughs> but it's written... From the perspective of a character, actually of a side character, who doesn't really take part in the actual stories. Well, no, he's editing um, it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. No, no, no. No, we're, we're, we're talking first about, about Jack. Yes. So the original Alamancer Jack pieces I, I discovered as I was researching this were actually not written by Brandon. They were written by Isaac. <laughs> So for our listeners who aren't aware, Isaac Stewart is Brandon's art director. And what happened is with the broadsheets, you know, in the original Mistborn series, we have the epigrams, right? Which Mm -hmm. are the stories sort of behind the scenes stories going on where we hear from Elindy, we hear from Quan, and then we hear from, spoiler alert, whoever the hero of ages is, say that. And in what? this, he, wait, what? 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 <laughs> it, okay, listen. This is era two. If you don't know that, then you really start. There's really the no place. helping you at this point. <laughs> and whoever directed you to that is a bad person. Very bad. Very bad. 
Provable. But no. So what happened is um, Isaac Stewart, Brandon, Ben McSweeney, who does a lot of Brandon's art, and Peter Alstrom all got together and they each sort of divvied out different blurbs and pieces from the broadsheets because they wanted them as if they were written by different people, written in different styles. So and, how do the people write it? And Isaac wrote the Alamancer Jack shorts. It's a clever <laughs> solution. And it's apparently his first foray into fiction. Now he's it's also fun. got a uh, he's also got a children's book coming called Monsters Don't Wear Underpants, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, I have seen his artwork. Um, so for he's that. he's got that coming later on this year. But this was his very his first step into writing fiction, and I just think he he had, and I love that Brandon was having you know he was talking to people, answering questions, and he felt it was important to say you know it's like you're really going to enjoy this because it's Isaac's first foray into it, and it's really fun. <laughs> it's I was just like ah, good supporting. That's cool. <laughs> It really um, is a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's modeled after the old gentleman adventurer stories that you would see in the newspapers of the 19th century. Mm-hmm. And these stories were often either completely fictional, or if they had a kernel of truth, they were so drastically embellished. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels very Don Quixote. Yeah. Where the guy thinks he's a much bigger adventurer than he actually is. Um, maybe a little bit of Zap Brannigan from Futurama, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I now want to read the story with Alamancer Jack having Zap Brannigan's voice. <laughs> um, the cult. Alamance, Alamancer Zap. Oh my goodness, I want to do this now. And the asteroid field of Altania. <laughs> Or the black hole of it. Anyway, oh. this, we're, we're getting off course again. Sorry about that. This story is Whatever, ridiculous. Whatever, we're enhancing so. it. This is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it also, um, the these serials that were in newspapers, um, what would happen is like you'd have a newspaper and, you know, nowadays sometimes you'll see comic strips that have ongoing plots. But back in the day, what they would do is they would have episodes of these journeys these epic stories published in the local papers uh charles dickens did this Mm -hmm. um and these people would be paid by the word and so a lot of times they would tend to get a bit loquacious (laughs) they get a bit wordy they would talk a lot and add in extra things my favorite is this was novels but alexandre dumas he was paid by the word and so if you look at things like the three musketeers there are so many extra sentences that are completely unnecessary. Just because he gets you know, paid more. You know, it's like, Athos said, let's go here. And Porthos said, yes, we should go there. And Aramis <laughs> says, why, why, yes, we will go there. And so they went. And it's just like, they went so, there. You forgot just like there. pumping up the word count. It's <laughs> basically me in middle school and sometimes even college. Because you have a word count you got to hit and... So you just, you just whatever the say no so. the sec- the secret's twelve point five font and a one point one five spacing. Oh no 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 the mm-hmm. the, the English they professors onto are onto that one. They, well, they weren't on to it back when I was doing it because we still had to print oh. out our papers back then. I think I think I wrote like a ten page paper in like a night. Mm-hmm. That was bad. I <sighs> made I did, I got a seven I got a seventeen page paper out one time in a oh, night. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a bad idea. But anyway, so yeah, they would pack these and they would publish them weekly. And it was just sort of like, you know, how you have your weekly episodes of TV that you you wait for. That's how it worked then is Mm -hmm. as the uh, as the bookkeeper in um, The Never Ending Story said, back when I was your age, television was called books (laughs) and they would have these episodic things. And so Brandon and company decided that's what this needs. So we'll create this random character. Um, and then, of course, in uh, Shadows of Self and Bands of Mourning, there are actually some similar s- stories about a character named Nikki Savage, um, or Nichelle Sauvage in one of them, um, who she basically learned how to tell stories from Jack. So she's kind of... Nikki Savage sounds like a wrestler name. <laughs> <laughs> it totally does. I didn't even think about that, but it does. It's sort of like Nikki Heat from the Castle, book, from <laughs> yeah. the books that, that oh, Richard Castle yes. wrote. Oh, man. Now, Brandon himself actually wrote the longer short story, which the, the, he wrote Alex, the, Alamancer Jack in the Pits of Altania. Mm. Um, and he wrote it as something to include in the Alloy of Law supplement to Mistborn, 
the Mistborn Adventure game that Crafty Games published. Mm -hmm. So in the Mistborn Adventure game, Brandon wrote the 11th medal, which we'll actually be discussing next week. And for this one, he decided he wanted to do... In in that one, it was... It was for... It was more of an introduction to the setting for people who weren't familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And for this one, he wanted to dive a little deeper, still have something fun and lighthearted. So in the other one, you had a more serious story that was an introduction. This is something that's more fun and lighthearted, but actually goes into some deeper lore, such as the origin of the Coloss. Mm Mm-hmm. Or not the origin, but the origin of the Era 2 Coloss. Yeah, I'm just trying to find out what's going on with them, because, like, in Alloy of Law, we, uh, what was his name? Tarson, I think it was, Mm -hmm. the the Coloss-blooded pewter arm. Yeah. And we just, we don't know what Coloss-blooded really means, because... Right. Yeah. It's like, like, how does that work? I don't know if I want to know the details and how that works. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same well, time, tell me the when details. He first, when he first says yeah. it, the, the first thought is, does that mean he's half cola? Why is there a half cola? <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. That poor woman. Mm-hmm. I, I, need I don't an adult. want to know. <laughs> Who says it was a woman? <laughs> well, there's a there's probably... Well, uh, well and that's the issue. Is we know that they don't have a reproductive <laughs> cycle. And so... so I, yeah. Mm, I don't know. Right. Yeah. And so it's clearly mm-hmm. something that Seized did to change things a bit. Yeah, Seized... Says, says I was, I was going to say played God, but he's not really playing. So. <laughs> he is. So it, yeah. But yeah. So anyway, he wrote this to put into the Alloy of Law supplement. Um, now, for those who, are, um, who aren't aware, Crafty Games, they did the Mistborn Adventure game. They're also the ones who did Mistborn House War and are making those Mistborn metal dice, which are just so gorgeous. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And that. we are not being paid by them or, or anything. I just really, really it's, like it's what they cool. put out. So. so. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual story. story. Yep. <laughs> First off, as Amy was saying, it's uh, it was written by Jack, but there are so much snark. It has director's commentary. <laughs> I, I want more, editors. Like, it's if, editors' if, commentary. If there was some like, I I don't know what it would take, but I'd I'd love for Brandon to like take whatever student that he favors the most and trusts the most, and just I want more versions of this in all the books. I want. I want Mistborn, but with Doxon offering his commentary. I want. I, I just want. I mean, my goodness. Sanctioned, the, the, sanctioned could you, fanfic. Could you imagine what? how snarky, like, if Yesna was offering commentary on what's going oh, on gosh. in Way of Kings? So many burns. So many burns. And, and she's having them... to read through whatever Kaladin and, and Shalon are moping about. <laughs> I want Nightblood's retelling of Warbreaker. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> it reminds me of, I can't remember the character's name, but in the Marvel, like, Ant-Man. Like, oh, yes. Louise. Like, Louise. Louise, like, how well, everybody's like, oh, yeah, Louise should totally, I well, would watch a movie if Louise just told how this thing happened. And it's, we've, it kind we've of made reminds the joke me about with Because Nightblood. people have pointed out, and it's appropriate, that Lopin and the Herdasians are clearly influenced on some level by Lat- Latino culture. Mm-hmm. And... Someone well, Brandon has said as much. Yeah, and well, someone yeah. point like wanted like the Lopin version of the Luis statements <laughs> of the retellings <laughs> of the Stormlight books, and part of me oh, wants yes. to do it. Yes. I just I don't know. Like it would take a ton of effort, but at because you can't just deliver those lines th- you, the you, way. Yeah, I forget the actor's name. He's so good. Mm-hmm. He does at, a great job. And, so Pena. you'd have Michael to Pena? definitely. You definitely oh, yeah, have to it. get the the cadence the, and the, the cadence and, right. And oh, absolutely! I would love there, to there's try so it. So much to it, yeah. But it I, could be yeah. so much fun to drop something like that right before uh, Rhythm of War. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and Brandon <laughs> has actually said writing Handerwim's commentary has was like some of the most fun he's had. Oh, writing. it's it's you can tell just because he he's had a lot of fun with it. Well, and the thing that I love is that okay, Jack is clearly a blowhard. Mm-hmm. Handwim's a bit of a blowhard himself. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's great seeing him calling Jack out for all this stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that he just, at the, like, at the end of the story, just, yes, they forgot me. <laughs> yep, they left me. Oh, and I, what is oh, it? There's, there's, there's just, they're all really fun. My children kept looking over at me like, Mom, what do you... What? Why are you suddenly laughing again? What's so funny? Well, and I'm like, I'll I can't tell you explain it older. to you. <laughs> well, for example, when uh, 
at one point, Handerwim comments, you know, he says, I, I once spoke to him and told him that, you know, about calling these different races savages. And <gasps> yes! at one, po- one time, they called terrorist people savages. And he's like, and I'm so proud to have a, a savage as a I'm friend. I'm so honored to call, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that I can consider you a friend, and, you know, even. <laughs> and he's like, and, I And, and I poor Handerwim even... is just flummoxed. He's like, I, he. He was so sincere that I... (laughs) I couldn't tell him how offensive that was. (laughs) Yeah, that was one that I had to show my husband. I was like, you got to read this. (laughs) This is golden right here. Like, Alamancer Jack is sort of a... A less jerky version of Captain Hammer. Mm. Or of... uh, Not quite Kronk, but but just sort of a... He's just... The lovable idiot. (laughs) I keep thinking that there's like the perfect comparison and I can't remember what it is. I'll keep thinking on that. Which is cause he's it'll come to me. It's clear part of it is he he is a creature of the roughs in that he is someone who clearly doesn't take to polite society. Um mm-hmm. He's Professor Lockhart. <laughs> from Harry Potter. Gilderoy Lockhart. Can you see me? That one. Can you all hear me? Which one is Lockhart? I'm trying to remember. Lockhart uh, the is the one the who, who steals everybody's. Year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The one who steals okay. other stories. He steals and then, yeah. and then erases their memory. Which is a good move. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jordan, that that's something a bad person would say. <laughs> oh, oh, was that a problem? Indeed. No. Suddenly I feel like I'm hand to women, Jordan's Jack. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not going to run away oh, from... No. Uh, from greatness, Bill. From a you mean from a bit? Well, that's also okay. true. <laughs> One of my favorite little little Easter eggs that Brandon threw in is early on when Jack was trying to find his pouch of tin that was in, hidden in his boot. Yeah. He he mentions Renette's heel contraction. I know. And, and I was just like, like oh wait, it's Renette. <laughs> of course, wax wouldn't be you know wouldn't be her only customer. It's like Q doesn't work only for for James Bond. He actually yeah. works for a lot of people. He just mm-hmm. you know. Bond is the coolest, and he's, he's the one the you're coolest. watching from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The thing, the thing I really like about one, the fact that he gets things from Renette, is it does show that he he isn't just like some, you know, right. Fa- she she would faker. She wouldn't humor him if he didn't have at least some capability. Well, and you yeah. can see that in Handwim's writing because there are things he's just like, I can confirm that this thing actually did happen, but I don't know how he did it. And so in some mm-hmm. level, he he's like a magician who hides his tricks because he's mm-hmm. clearly done something that, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, OK, I know he didn't do this, but they don't know what he actually did. It's it's very Jack Sparrow. And now that I think about <gasps> it, it's yes! sort of Jack Sparrow. It also yeah. reminds me of uh, there's a few episodes of How I Met Your Mother. Like at one point, he's Barney. like, OK, now I wasn't there for this. But if you ask her, Aunt Robin will tell you this is exactly how it happened. And then suddenly you see her flipping a bike over like three cars. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, so th- that's my story and I'm sticking to it is kind of how it goes. <laughs> I finally um, I finally started watching Gravity Falls, like you kept saying, Jordan. So. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of you right now. I know. I got like Literally four nothing else you've done in. has ever made me more proud of you. <laughs> he's, not go- anyway. he's not kidding. Oh, uh, man. I actually, wait anyway. I see the Miss Cloak. But anyway... So, so anyway, but I, I watched the episode um, where they go to the convenience store, the the haunted one, and that reminds me of of the the teenage coworker they have who who covers for Dipper. Wendy. He, he, Wendy, yes. Oh, Wendy right. covers for him and says, "Yeah, he totally did the cool thing. He didn't do the the little kid dance to <laughs> to save us from the ghosts. the lammy lammy dance, <laughs> lammy lammy dance in lamb costume and everything." Wow. Yeah, guys, Cosmere. 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 Co- sorry. Cosmere. Sorry. <laughs> We're totally focused. Yes. I, I love uh, I love Jack's embellishment of, okay, now I wouldn't tell this story because it's so embarrassing to me, but it, it's true. And I, I hope you don't think ill of me. I licked the rock to get 10. <laughs> it's just like, wait, what? And then Handerwim's little comment is like, they only had to read the first story to. Oh, to. To. to think less of that, you to think less of you one of my favorite <laughs> things is i love how handwim is just like near the beginning where he's just like i'm kind of shocked that he never reads my commentary <laughs> well that's the thing is like clearly he doesn't read it <laughs> so i can do these things make my little footnotes well because 
he just assumes that Handerwim fawns over him as much as everybody else does because everybody loves him and mm-hmm. he's wonderful. And so, of course, Handerwim would never say anything <laughs> bad about him. Why should he? So he trusts everything he puts in because clearly, yeah. oh, it's wonderful. I also it's just, just so much fun as far as Handerwim, because you talked about how Handerwim himself is a bit of a blowhard. Like when mm-hmm. he talks about, I don't understand why people read the broadsheets when clearly, uh, like I, you know, my commentary is better. It's why I prefer the audience of these things. Of, it's the, like, of the talk, compilation, talk ones. about pa- pandering to your audience. In that regard, I do think that the six community is probably superior to the average Sandersonian reader. One hundred percent. Yes. It, it's a it's a higher caliber of readership. I frankly really. don't know it's... why anyone would go with any other <laughs> type of thing that they would want to listen to when they could listen to us. Yes, of wow. course. Wow, we went there. Okay, one thing. I mean, fr- is... to be fair, you two have plausible deniability. <laughs> it's really mostly my fault. Uh, one thing, yes, as no? an English nerd, I love that he picks apart. <laughs> The grammar. <laughs> oh, yes. There's so much of it. He's like, I couldn't fix it. Is it. He's like, oh, wonderful. this is, oh, it's, he's, well, like, yeah. for example, he says, uh, almost invisible. I located it merely by touch. And Hannah was just like, yes, I understand that the way it's written, it means that he was briefly invisible, but he will not let me go back and fix it. <laughs> He's like, he won't let me fix that part. Well, and I love how they're certain. Which means that he reads it at least in some point or well, Hannah him does it you actually does ask and <laughs> well and that's the yeah. thing because we also know there's certain changes that hand to him does put in like mm-hmm. the coloss with the exclamation marks in the oh my gosh that's amazing <laughs> yes that he's, he says that's that, just like, one he's... of those brandon where did you come up with this well it's because it's not coloss to... bill it's coloss apparently I, well the thing is when you look at a lot of epic fantasy there are so many words and names that have apostrophes just sprinkled Randomly. through like so much pixie dust oh, you're like, uh, how yeah. do you even say that i don't even know um, let's and uh not that brandon's not guilty of that looking at you everything in warbreaker uh, true <laughs> but at the same time that follows a pattern that he's said at least where it's mm-hmm. just you have the, the, the double stuttering. consonants at the beginning but and so it's he's just i think he's sort of poking fun at that and taking it to the next logical step. It's like, apostrophe, nothing. We're going to put an exclamation point in. Because it's extra. It's next stop, emphasis. interrobang. Yeah. We need more interrobangs in our life. We do. Everybody does. Mm-hmm. Okay, so back to the adventures of Jack and what actually is going <laughs> on after he licks the rock. The and Sanderson commentary. Stay for the punctuation <laughs> jokes. <laughs> it's um, fun. English is or grammar is fun. Yay. Grammar. Grammar. I can totally speak English. It's great. Okay, so Jack sees a crow and, and it starts talking to him and my first thought is Kendra. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to go over his head. No, he assumes it's a Kendra. A spirit. No, he a, a faceless immortal, which is a Kendra. But he also calls it like a spirit guide or something, didn't right. he? Right. Well, I, and then, of course, Handerwim immediately chimes in and, sa- and says he's mixing up the mythologies of pathism and, and survivorism. survivorism. <laughs> and he's like, and I've never seen this bird that he talks about either. He's like, I'm pretty sure it's because of the head, the head wound <laughs> that mm-hmm. he's hallucinating. I also love he, you know, he gets a gun. He says, a gun is the most elegant of weapons. And my immediate thought was, yeah, Obi-Wan would disagree. <laughs> yeah, Obi-Wan. He was just like, so uncivilized. Uh, so uncivilized. I, I do kind of like, though, because, you know, he's a gentleman adventurer, so we assume mm-hmm. a little bit racist. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, because it, it's clearly what he's patterned after, the old gentleman adventurers. And, mm-hmm. you know, there is a lot of racism. Some of it, some of it innocent Very and not ca- understanding. Some of Very it casual. Yeah. They don't they don't understand how offensive it is. Mm-hmm. And yeah. but 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 it's just one of those. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it makes sense from that perspective to see the gun as the civilized weapon. Because, because it's made by a civilized people. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you can tell, are they civilized? Do they have guns? That's the very basics. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't have that, then clearly you're uncivilized. Well, and if he spent his time training to become a sharpshooter, then cl- then he's aware of the skill and practice that takes. And yeah. 
maybe unaware of the skill and practice other weapons take. And so he just says, well, I know this takes a lot, so clearly it's superior. Well, well in that era, like it's that the era of, view. of guns, there's they don't exactly have sharpshooters at that point. Like that's not a, that's you know, guns it's old west weren't style. as reliable. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, except that he, we know that he's also worked with Renette. Yeah, but even Renette's so, guns aren't like you know they don't have full barrel rifling the way that you would see on a modern gun or anything like that. I think so. Um, yeah, but the uh, the 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 main issue is just the fact that those guns aren't very accurate. Like if you read anything about the old West, like things, if you got kills, it was a very rare thing with a pistol because pistols were not accurate weapons. They were they're insanely heavy, mm -hmm. and the caliber they have to shoot because their bullets could not travel as fast as a modern bullet. Um, so in order to have penetrating power, they had to be heavier, which means you're going to be even more wild because now your gun's heavier. And it's going to have or a lot have more a, kick. Or have a steel or coin shot behind him. Well, and so and this is the part that I find interesting because we see a different way that Allomancy helps someone in combat because with Wax, we see the obvious way. He can kick his own weight up and push and suddenly he gets armor-piercing bullets. Mm -hmm. um, but all all Jack is is a, is a tin eye. but I like mm -hmm. him using it, A, for the aim, but also to sort of steady himself. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting because it sort of harkens to uh, the way that Spook used his Tenai abilities in Hero of Ages, where he well, burned it enough that he got no, he couldn't have mm -hmm. pewter you know, pewter uh, supernatural balance, but he could use it to sort of let him have a form of it. Well, and it's also sort of like you know, if you're if you're groggy, and you'll like you know slap yourself, sort of jolt your, um, you know, try and jolt your body to. To, to, be, to awareness consciousness again. to awareness yes exactly and with 10 it's like you flare it and suddenly it just sort of shocks your body it's almost like being, it pulls being you tired out and waking up from a nap and then flicking on the light and that makes you perk mm -hmm. up more because it's the light's just right there um well, one other it, thought i it triggers those defense mechanisms mm -hmm. and stuff and starts sending adrenaline through your body and that kind of thing yeah one other thing that coming back to the the gun being a, a elegant weapon is I can't remember the lady's name, but his his love interest. She ends up when she does show up. Alessandra. She's wearing Alessandra, or Ella. Anyway, but she she shows up and she's wearing Kolos clothes, which are much more revealing. And um and he's shocked by it, you know. And and in civilized well, society, women wear. He's a gentleman, yes. So they expect I ladies say. to wear a lot more. I say yes. Um, well, I but I it just it just was a thought that came to mind that that you know what your attire is is also a big part of being a gentleman or a gentle lady in, mm -hmm. in that time and you, i mean you follow says, a certain set of rules mm -hmm. the protocol I, I, that said when she shows up and he says i i, I won't describe how, how she looked <laughs> because it you know it it's, it's would, too scandalous you know it'd be too scandalous and then handle comes in and <laughs> he just chimes in he's like yeah so they made a so why did they make a full <laughs> fully the, illustrated like, detailed picture of this scene it's like well the, yeah, the newspapers go ahead and went and did that anyway <laughs> the editor it. said wow this will sell exactly yep. <laughs> yeah and it's just oh it's so fun because he puts you know he pokes fun um Br brandon has so much fun poking fun vicariously mm -hmm. and it's just it, it like, you can tell he had a lot of fun writing this. I also personally oh, yeah. like to believe this is Brandon's best way. That He's just like, oh, we're going to turn this out. Wait a minute. I don't need to edit it. <laughs> I, my second pass will just be hand whip. And he just rubs his hands uh -huh. together. It's, like, <laughs> it's a loophole. I love it's loopholes. <laughs> yep. I also love um, the fact that he tells the story of how he, he wrote this missive and then sealed it up and and then he's like I sealed it up and then I jumped and Handel was like don't ask me how he wrote the last paragraph after sealing it away <laughs> because this was the the last paragraph of a chapter where did Which he get the guy, rope dude. to tie the turtle shells together <laughs> hair yeah, back. from my back from, from my, my back, back. <laughs> that's but pirates I, I just I love how Handel questions a lot of his feet he's just like how come all these most heroic things that he does, I'm never around for? Yeah, it seems like, suspect. Seems just a little weird. 
What are you talking about? Mm. The talking crow seems on the level. Totally. Mm. Well, again, we, I mean, we've seen talking dogs. In, in <laughs> yeah. The mis- well, it's, in, it, it fits perfectly so, within yeah. the world. They've read the, the words of founding, so they know all about Vin's, uh, Vin's history with uh, Orser and Tensoon. Mm-hmm. And so it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, to the, it's not just they know her history with Orser and Tensoon. They make Sunni pups. Yep, I know. To, 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 to give I for to, children to cuddle. You really do. It's it's that. a it's a gold mine waiting for you if you uh, oh. figure out a way to quickly make those. Mm. No, no, I, they'd be too expensive. That's the problem. So if I made anyway, the way I'd want to. Go ahead. Jack discovers the pool that, and I love I love he he talks about this poem that tells where the pool is going to be. And mm-hmm. he misquotes it. Like, he quotes it differently every all of six times. And Handroom's like, yes, I know that he quoted it differently all of six times. No, he won't let me go back and make them all <laughs> fit together. Together. He won't let me edit it. On some level, I actually respect Alamancer Jack on that because, it, you know, however he quoted it at the time, that's what he thought it was at the time. It's more authentic that way. Because that's how memory is. You mess it <laughs> up. Mm-hmm. It, it moves around and everything. But it's six different times that it always fits the situation just perfectly. It's just one of those. It's obvious. Oh, Jack. Well, think about that. Six. What's the name of the podcast? Six. Uh-huh. Coincidence? Uh-huh. I think not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But what does Brandon have to gain from this? What indeed? Everything. <laughs> everything. So he discovers the pool because of this poem and Handroom actually confirms. He's like, I, I don't know how he did. He did actually find the location of, of the treasure. I've gone back. I've confirmed it. It's actually there. I don't understand it. And he's like, he, he kind of gets mad that Jack keeps succeeding. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of these things. He keeps succeeding. And so there's just enough success record that you wonder, like, does it does he have the secret crow that only shows up when he's alone because it's trying to help him do something because it's somehow helpful to harmony or something who knows Mm -hmm. but But at the same time because no one sees it it's just you know who there's just enough how much how much hander one just has to play the the one sane man where he's just like no He, he he's an idiot he, he's an absolute buffoon. How do don't, you not see Don't it? revere him. <laughs> <laughs> Yet he keeps getting the treasure and gets the girl. And, and yeah. I just love, you know, that's probably why Handerwim actually does follow him around. You know, Jack sees him as this loyal manservant and Handerwim's just like, I just got to w- one time see how the heck this <laughs> things keep working. It's there, very there, black secret. I, I got to find his secret, you know. Mm-hmm. And very you can just see adder. poor Handerwim very gradually going mad trying to figure it out. I uh, I love Handerwim as a concept. I also just love Handerwim as a like sort of a show of the terrace like culture as far as going forward. That he still is somewhat to you know carry on the the seeker tradition um, mm-hmm. in a very different manner because you know we don't see any. It's a very we, different world. Yeah, well, and we don't yeah. see that he has any, uh, you know, ferrochemical ability. Yeah. like he's not a he's not an archivist or anything like that. So mm-hmm. it's uh, at least not that we know of. But yeah, yeah very, I feel very like he would have mentioned it if uh, possibly if he ha- if or he had possibly some sort Brandon's of keeping mine. that up his sleeve. <laughs> well, that's where you would put no. a copper mine. So wow, and there we go again. Okay, <laughs> one thing that, that I noticed is. Brandon apparently likes jokes about dividing by zero. I didn't notice this. You're the first one to point this out. I, I saw this. it. It just cracked me up because, it, you know, Jack mentions that if he was turned into a coloss, he oh. would he would lose his mind and become, you know, he would he would lose That's himself right. and become an animal. And Hander was just like, I'm not sure if this is possible. It would be much like dividing by a null set. <laughs> and I was just like, inappropriate? Like dividing by zero? By zero? That's pattern. <laughs> oh, pattern. Yes. Pattern and I was just like, Brandon, pattern. you went back to the well, but you did it. You did a good job at it. <laughs> that was good. Well, no, Bill, it's it different because the last time it was dividing by zero. This time it's a null set. So clearly it's an ar- it's an array joke. Set, array. Oh my goodness! So clearly, handle no. part of it. No, 
<laughs> Clearly, Handwoom is the, the leader of this secret society. <laughs> Therefore, oh, and then of course, it confirmed. And then of course, we make the shocking discovery that Alessandra is Colos blooded. And she just uses makeup and sleeves and gloves to hide I, it. I, well, and apparently, according to Handerwim, the original episode ended at this reveal, which apparently nearly caused riots, which required them to publish the next <laughs> chapter the next day instead of waiting an entire week. Just oh, like, man. I love just the, mm-hmm. the look at just the, these pulp stories and people devouring them. And I, like, I know I how people it. are after an episode that ends on a cliffhanger or a, a, a crazy reveal they start frothing this is why i'm so glad we can binge watch a lot of shows so you don't have to deal with that cliffhanger you'll be like no no i've got five more i'm good i can better on netflix (laughs) i'm also just really impressed with alessandra's makeup ability that she for months was using like because you would have to cake it on to change your you know oh and the other problem is is even 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 if you cake it on if you sweat it's gonna smear it's gonna yeah that's hard. I don't know. Of course, know how maybe she that's always it. been the case, and Jack is just an idiot. So. Well, but the problem I is mean, uh, hand whims yeah. with them, so. Right. He might notice, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, she must have had collars up to here, so she had the less skin she has to paint, the better. Cause, so oof. the the interesting part of this is, as I was reading, particularly the way he described the reveal that she was Colas blooded, it reminded me a lot of what actually happened to Wax in mm. Shadows of Self. Very much so. He's like, you know, the yeah. woman that he's known for forever and has, has idolized and she's wonderful and all that stuff is something completely different than he ever expected. Yeah. And technically, you know, Kolos and Kondra are cousins. So. Yeah. Difference is one's an actual Indians. shapeshifter, so Wax not noticing is uh, understandable. A little, a little Fair more enough. understandable, yeah. She's, she's also a little bit older than Alessandra yeah. would, would have been. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, I just thought it was a really, really interesting parallel. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick up on that, but good job. Now, the other thing that, that, and then of course, immediately Handelwim chimes in and he's like, if you know Sandra, you probably realize that any statement that lacks three curses and a comment about (laughs) Jack's questionable parentage cannot truly be attributed to her, but she does seem to be fond of him for some reason. (laughs) What I love that. about that, it sounds like she fit right in with Renette. Yep. Or, or Lessie. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, but yeah, it's just. What is it about all these gentleman adventurers <laughs> wanting these rough and tumble girls? <laughs> they want the bad girls? I don't know. But, and still, the way that Jack describes her, though, is like the fainting damsel. And, mm-hmm. and it's just like, I, I read My this passage beloved. to her and she just laughed. <laughs> yeah. What I, what I love was, about her, she doesn't line. care. Yeah, there there was one line that she insisted that was put in the way she actually said it, which had a, a swear word in it. Oh, and, yeah. And, and I think Candorum well, comments and says that she threatened his male anatomy if he did yeah. not make sure that oh, it was He used correctly. it even well, a dang, better term. What was it? It was... Uh, it was that maybe th- it was like his male personage or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Identity. It was something like that. Male, identity. Yeah, yeah, the male I- his masculine male identity. identity or something like that. Just like he writes the ahem into the <laughs> into the text. <laughs> well, and uh, like earlier on, Jack says something. Oh, he, he says something about I don't care, I don't want any glory. And Handwim just comments in. He's just like, uh. Um. Uh. <laughs> it's and like then, no glory, huh? Really. All right, so what did y'all think of Jack's attempted ruse <laughs> for oh. the Colas? They're just like, because they tell him that they're going to make him a Colas, and he's, I, I am I already, already a Colas. Am one. And they're like, mm, guns don't count as being strong. Nope. And he's like, yeah. It just sounds they're so just like, the you're, dog you're not a you're not, you're not blue. You don't have the way. <laughs> and Jack says, well, I slew your champion. How else could I have done that? Gun. You, know? you don't <laughs> need to be strong, strong to use that. Yeah. Dang it. They saw through what was it otherwise oh, a, an amazing... A flawless know, plan. <laughs> the one weakness. They saw oh. it. <laughs> what was it? On a, on a, an episode of The Simpsons, the, the mafia guys get into a shootout and one of them gets shot and he's just like, ah, bullets, my one weakness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hmm. But yeah. But it's like um, even Alessandro's like, what are you doing? And he's just sort of like, hush now, I'm he's improvising. Like, he's, like, he's like, no, no, hush, child. I, 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 I will save us. And she's just like, you moron. Don't talk. <laughs> You're injured. Oh, man. And so he decides he can get them the treasure of the survivor. Mm-hmm. And he dives in and tells all a, sorts of... He takes of, a rock with him to get there down There are so further. many plot holes. <laughs> I love yeah. He's like, he gets to the bottom and he... He blows into this water this bl- skin that's attached to yeah. it so that it will float and up. And he's like, first off, he's out of breath. Second off, that's one breath. breath. But then How later is that going to actually- lift it? <laughs> yeah, but then later on he chimes in. He's like, actually, Goes you know, up. if it he all says- required was a bag of hot air, the greatest, why, why would the greatest one of all even need the, <laughs> the bladder? My favorite line is he's like, it's an unfathomable depth. <laughs> and then he's like, which is to say precisely 18, 18 point so much fathoms. I checked. I checked. <laughs> oh, because like, he was Hendo safe with us. Handelwim is such a great character. I don't think it would be nearly as enjoyable if he was actually written into the story. But mm-hmm. as as a snarky narrator th- throwing in commentary, he's wonderful. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's there's one part where Jack's like, oh, I don't even know where Handelwim is. He, he's probably in trouble. And he's like, I was actually asleep. The Kolos gave me a really nice bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, they forgot about me. They, they forgot about me. me. I was sleeping. Well, but the, this is the thing I also like about it is Handwoman was making fun of, no, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Yet he got the spikes. He, mm-hmm. he, he did somehow raise it. And like, I can't remember how much of a fathom is. It's pretty deep, actually. Like that. Uh, let's see. What was is it? Is it like 20? Fathom feet. It's, it's six feet. Yeah. It's two yards. Six no. feet. Okay. And so, so 18. If, yeah, so 18 times 6. You're hearing math being done here. live on the air. That's 108 feet down. Mm-hmm. Like, that's pretty far. That's, that's an impressive that's a lot of feet. That's an impressive yeah. feat on Jack's part. Like, mm-hmm. he didn't fake his way through this one. And mm-hmm. now it's like, well, okay, you clearly didn't blow into the sheep's bladder. But he did get it up. So, so how did that like, So how did you do that? <laughs> In the words of Minerva McGonagall, through sheer dumb luck. <laughs> hey, you do it enough. It's a skill. Mm-hmm. It just works. But then, okay, so inside the chest, this is, this is interesting. Like, I, I think this was a cool little plot point that mm-hmm. Brandon decided to address. Because inside the chest are a bunch of hemallergic spikes. Mm-hmm. Where did they come from? We're not really sure, but... Somehow, Kelsier gathered them together, or somebody gathered them together. Mm-hmm. And um, put them in an aluminum box and sunk The other thing that's cool. interesting is they keep talking about how this is the, the treasure of the survivor and all, that, and all that stuff. And it's sort of a nod to um, what goes on at the end of uh, Bands of Mourning. What we discover is that, you know, Kelsier actually was active in the, <laughs> in the world after the mm-hmm. events of the... Of the the first book yeah so here's my personal theory on what's going on with these spikes okay personally as much as i would love to credit things to kelsier just inexplicably this doesn't make sense to me (laughs) as far as some even though kelsier is messing around with heme allergy as we know um what very well could have be the case is it was done by marsh I th- it, yeah, it could be done by Marsh. I think it's specifically been done by Seized. Um this, this is part of Seized's plan. And my logic behind it is Seized clearly has a plan of some kind for the Kolos. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there clearly have some sort of warring tribes thing going on according to, uh, to Alessandra. Mm-hmm. And by getting these spikes, suddenly this tribe is going to be able to survive. Mm-hmm. Given his natural, you know... The fact he's seeking out balance. I could mm-hmm. see a scenario where Seized set up a, you know, a solution that Coloss are not smart enough to figure out. Because it seems to me whatever that device is, you needed to have some level of wits to figure out whatever turned on the sheep's bladder device. It's mm-hmm. some clever contraption. Mm-hmm. And a Coloss wouldn't have been able to figure that out even if they could dive all the way to the bottom. Right. But Jack 
hapless idiot that he is, is <laughs> someone who's willing to try. And so I think the crow actually was there. I think the crow did actually guide him and that it is actually mm-hmm. a Chandra you, with Seized, who likes to use minimum necessary force, setting someone up in place to be able to solve the problem without Seized mm-hmm. having to be the one who does it himself because mm-hmm. Seized doesn't want to be directly involved. He wants people mm-hmm. to be able to... He uses agents, correct. Yeah. And so yeah. that's my personal theory of what's actually going on here. And that everything getting described as a survivor is something that Seize doesn't care much for glory. He never has been. He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. if he sets up iconography around Kelsier, you know, he's perfectly fine with, with that. Mm-hmm. As I, long as it gets I wonder the job if done. there's I think that Kelsier might still be doing some things, but I don't know if we can totally pick apart which is gonna be Seize right. and which is gonna be Kelsier and which is gonna be the set and which is going to be you know all the different groups that are running around right but it's it's I interesting did, I, I love how like vague it, it is yeah yeah i liked at the end how there was a little hint about he's like oh and i need to look into these lights to the south mm-hmm. did you guys catch that which yep. is which is a little nod to mm-hmm. to what we, again, what we see in bands of mourning bands of mourning mm-hmm. no 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 it's out we in could. the roughs it's bands of mourning's fine mourning i i mourning. okay <laughs> I almost wore uh, my cowboy hat, but I ran out of time. And then if you if you read the postscript where Brandon's sort of giving his little commentary on it, he I like the fact that he compares Wax and Jack to modern Batman versus the Adam West Batman, both of which he loves because <laughs> you have like the serious story and you have the campy story. Oh. And both can be great in their own ways. Mm-hmm. Well, and what I love is we see through um, Alloy of Law, through uh, Maracy's like her discussions of the legends around wax right wax mm-hmm. himself isn't immune from this uh this tall tale nature of things yeah right the difference being that jack is going out seeking specifically that and wax is kind of it, wanting it to happens. avoid it he likes yeah. it a little bit yeah. but he also is just like no that that's not what i'm doing Dad, God, stop it yeah. <laughs> in, in some ways wax sees some of it is useful like having mm-hmm. that that legend around him lets him do things he wouldn't be able to do otherwise, but it's right. just another tool to him. It's not, exactly. it's not the reason for doing it. Mm-hmm. And with Jack, he specifically wants the fame and glory. Again, when he says he doesn't want it, Handerwim's response is, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just, ah, uh, good times. Good, good times. Mm-hmm. And then a- of course the bot, the box at the end was made of aluminum, which was a priceless treasure. And hooray! So they did he get gets a the treasure. girl. He gets the treasure, and everything is wonderful. They ride off into the sunset, and he rests for a time before the next adventure. <laughs> mm-hmm. From Alabanza Jack, it's just, gentleman it's so... adventurer. <laughs> Until then, adventure on. Is his ending line there? I want to steal fun. that. That's fun. Adventure Until then, on. adventure on. <laughs> adventure on. Oh man, that is great. But yeah, any other thoughts on this? It was it was just fun to read. Again, the first time I read it, I had trouble getting into it. Just mm-hmm. because it was something so different from anything else Brandon's written. You go into it with the right mindset, though. It's just absolutely delightful. You go oh, in yeah. knowing, I'm going to get a campy, cheesy story that is absolutely hammed up in every possible way and has some amazing snark to cut that. Mm-hmm. It's a It's a fun time. Well, because the, correct me if I'm wrong, in the original Broadsheets version, the story was completely different and didn't have, like, it was the Broadsheets version with no hand whim uh, commentary, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I, again, I written, by, but, written yeah. by Isaac. Yeah. I didn't, the first time I read Alloy of Law, I didn't bother piecing together the story that was in the, the Broadsheets. I read them, but I didn't try piecing them together. Just yeah, I just, just like, I looked through them here and there and I was kind of like, okay, that's really kind of random, but all I, right. I was amused that it was in there because I, I, I could see exactly what Brandon was trying to do and I loved it. Um, by the way, just another thing that I'm, I, I want to mention again, I've mentioned this before. In the Era 3 books, the broadsheets are going to be comic book stories about Wax and Wayne. Oh, that's and right. And I am so freaking excited because honestly, yes. I'm positive that Wax wrote the first one. Or no. I mean, that Wayne you wrote mean, the first one. Yes, totally Wayne. Or illustrated, at least. Because I don't know if he can write it. Wrote and illustrated. In, uh, <laughs> in just absolute, like, in crayon drawings. Like, oh, yes. 
I, With I, its I, crayons, I can't tell you how he wrote it in I wax. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Good job. Oh, I'm not even mad. I'm mad. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, look, when someone throws a lob, you gotta sell it Good times, good catch. I did, um, I did like how it was, they, they were trying to pull out more um, lore about the Coloss, because in the first mm-hmm. era, the Coloss are only one gender. They don't really have a gender, right? And then in this one... I mean, um, I think they still technically well, retain the gender of whoever was But you spiked. just can't, you can't well, and that's sort of, tell. And that's sort of how it is in this one, actually. The it's, Coloss, yeah. Coloss. Not the Coloss blooded, but the Coloss. Because remember, he kills... Uh, her mom. Alessandra's mother. And he's like, that that was a woman? He's like, how did, I don't want to look. I don't want to peek. And he's like, I'm pretty Ugh. sure that's the only way to know. And I don't want to do that. So, Which yeah, actually I, makes I sense, because was... how would you tell that for a Chondra as well? And you, it's actually, that's actually, now that I think about it, it's mm-hmm. also somewhat true of the, of the Steel Inquisitors. Because we find out that there were some female Steel Inquisitors. Mm-hmm. But yet at the same They'd time, so Vin, Vin always says... Uh, he, he with every single he. steel inquisitor, mm-hmm. even though uh, that's true. And so something about heme allergy seems to so oh, it but... messes you up. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, reproductive organs are already a delicate thing, and then you add in heme allergy, and that's going to make it all sorts of interesting. Yeah. So, I never yeah. thought about that. That's a good point. Well, particularly hmm. since with heme allergy, you steal a bit of that other person's spirit web. And so, yeah, and I mean, and if you're so it have... kind of changes you at a. <laughs> Yeah. At a spiritual level. It get it mm-hmm. to, you know, and the spiritual affects the cognitive, which affects the physical. So, Yeah, but I'll tie in together and make it very... Um, Interesting. Oh, there's a word, but I can't remember what it is. Androgynous. Mm-hmm. Man, that, that's, a, that's a $3 word. Yeah, spelling that word is a pain. <laughs> I always feel like I'm going to miss a letter. All right. Now, thanks to our patrons, we are able to hold monthly giveaways. All of our giveaways are open to everyone and free to enter. And for this one, we are going to be giving away a paperback copy of The Alloy of Law. I thought, I figured that was kind of appropriate for what we've just been discussing. <laughs> yep. And so um, now to enter, just want to, you just want to keep an eye on our social media accounts on Facebook Twitter and Instagram you'll be able to enter once on each of those platforms for a maximum of three entries and I'll get something posted in the next couple days so keep an eye over there to enter Mm -hmm. of course we want to give some special thanks to Brandon Sanderson's online store at store.brandonsanderson.com for sending us so many awesome goodies that we can share with you our listeners We do love hearing from you, so keep on sending in your questions. You can ask us about the Cosmere. You can drop us an idea for a topic you want us to discuss. You can give us feedback about the show, or you can just ask us really anything. Send all questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to CosmereStudies at gmail.com, and hopefully we might even read it as a part of the show. But in addition, we actually now have a P.O. box. So if you want to send us... So if you want to send us physical letters, you can send those to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah, 84097. Or just look in the description. We'll have it. Probably. Yeah, we'll, we'll have it in the description as well. So now. But we don't want to limit you we... to just letters. If you just want to send straight money. Or I wasn't going to shill, Jordan. I wasn't going to shill. Money, you're oh. not supposed to send money through the mail. That's bad. It is Check. bad. But if they're going to do it, why not do it with us? <laughs> they can just become a patron if they want to give us money. I'll, we'll accept golden anyway, balloons. We'll figure it out. Fan art. If you want to mail us fan art. That, you know, <laughs> hey. Oh, that's right. Yeah, anyway. fan art, too. That's cool, too. Anyway, yeah, cool. now outside of the podcast, while we're where we're not necessarily shilling for your money on the <laughs> on stream, Jordan, um, <laughs> we do each uh, have our own projects that we're working on. So, Amy, where can we find you outside this show? Um, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay, and my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com. Lots of can, can I just going in there. chime in a little bit? 
during the the last giveaway, there were a couple of mentions of the evolution of <laughs> your your description of coincidence cosp dot cosp. dot dot because my name is because my name is too long. <laughs> I just, it I just is. It wouldn't fit the Twitter handle. It's too long. Um, anyway, so I have finished three of the Miss Cloaks and then um, the store fabric.com that I use uh, does not have the fabric right now because of COVID-19 and everything else crazy. So the fourth one is stalled, but um, I'm working that on... That would be mine. No, yours is through. Yours oh, is mine's done. through? Yeah, yours is I done. I thought mine I was have last. To, I, no, the one I'm oh. potentially going to do something else with is oh, cool. the one that's... So everybody, all three of ours is done. I need to trim yours to length, but we need to do that in person. Awesome. Um, so, so I have that, and then I have, so I have a, a Death Star 3D print. I'm going to put that for on my Christmas tree later. So I'm filling some nice. stuff on that. I did that today, that awesome. and I have a little cheapo spirit Halloween sword that I'm going to turn into a Nazgul sword. But the dots in it are too constant, so I'm filling that, and I'm going to redo my own dots and dings in it. And you should have I a made... little like curvy letters underneath the Death Star that says "That's no star." <laughs> I could figure that out, just not yet. Is it the tree topper? Um, then... It's it's supposed to be the tree topper. Yeah, it's gonna yes. be that. Um, and then let's see. So, and I had an online um, gift exchange thing, and I can't say what Pokemon they are, but I made two little Pokemon that I for for that and once that person's received it i will post my little felt ones that i made of that which were pokemon i'd never seen before and now i'm gonna make my children pokemon because they're like mom you're going to make us this one right right (laughs) right and i'm like yeah like the day after i told my son yes he's like so is haunter done yet is haunter done and i'm like i i haven't bought the fabric are you saying small children don't have a full (laughs) understanding of the passage of time and maybe a little impatient yeah, five-year-olds, they're very impatient. So anyway, so I'm, I'm sewing. I'm making lots of random things and all that crazy stuff. I'm so, as as an aside, how are you making Haunter? His arms, his hands are detached they're gonna, from his body. They're going to be attached because I don't trust the five-year-old not to lose the arms. My other idea was magnets, but I don't trust him not to lose those. How so, do they work? Yeah. You can, there are sewing oh. magnets you can do. <laughs> the, I, I, it's I, a I thing. I got your reference, Jordan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of Jordan, where can we find your work? What have you got going on? Uh, you can find me cool shilling for money on twitch.tv slash splice stream because uh, my car engine exploded yesterday and uh, Splice Mobile Trace is, uh, it died. So press F to pay respects. And uh, mm. so, yeah, I am over there uh, trying to get an entire Amiibo esports organization launched off the ground. Because I don't uh, make my project small enough, apparently. <laughs> but on well, the plus awesome. side, we got a logo, and it looks really cool and esportsy. And I paid someone what? to make it, and now I really want money back. Because again, what's, car what's the name of it? Uh, Gauss, uh, the Grand <laughs> Amiibo Ultimate Smash Series. Because uh, Gauss is those of you who are the more discerning viewers, which are Speaking going to be all of, of you. Are uh, it's a standard unit of magnetization because I want to bring the community together. Oh, look at how that oh. all ties together. It's physics and it's love <laughs> at the same time because they're the same thing. Oh boy! And as for myself, when I'm not here, I've got a bunch of board game reviews over at the Innkeepers Table at www.innkeeperstable.com. I also post about games and social media, so go check those out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at, at Innkeepers Table. I've also got uh, something cool possibly in the works, so I'll, I'll talk more about that later. But He does have something there, 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 vaguely cool in there, the works. I can confirm. There's, some, there's something brewing. <laughs> anyway, for those of you who do want to support the show but you can't become patrons just yet for any reason, whatever, we'd love it if you would just let your friends know about the show. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Actually, Bill, okay. I have to apologize. I just said it was vaguely cool. I just pulled an Alamancer Jack. It, what I meant, it's something that's vague that is cool is what I was actually trying to say. Not that it's okay. approximating cool. It is cool. It's just I appreciate amorphous that. at I, the moment. I, I was trying to sort of just speed past that because my, my feelings were a little hurt. So, no. Well, no. Look, a, Bill, kinda, you may be a savage, cool. but uh, I'm glad to call you a friend. <laughs> 
There we go. And he so, any uh, other final thoughts on uh, Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Altania? It's fun. Times. And yes, I realize I switch up the way I pronounce it. I, it's just how I do. Okay. Well, hey, that ties That's back idea. into Jack and uh, pronouncing exclamation or, points in Colas. It's great. I'm not even going back and editing it. <laughs> Better not. It's great. Um, I, I I would love this concept expanded out. I again, I want mm-hmm. my Dachshund, uh commentary over the final empire, and I want the Lopin's version of events from Way mm. of Kings. And his commentary on things. It'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, I wish I wasn't so rusty at writing. I used to do a lot more fanfic and stuff, and I'm just, I'm rusty now. I write a lot, but that's mostly marketing stuff, so I have fun. But that could be something fun to play with. Anyway, in, now, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts. Just do a search for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For our next episode, we'll be going back and finishing up our looks at the short fiction in Arcanum Unbounded with the 11th medal. So join us live on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table in two weeks on May 4th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's there's always always another another secret. secret. (laughs) 